The Hanseatic League, Middle Low German, Hansa, Dudische Hansa, Hansa, Standard German, Deutsche Hansa, Standard. Dutch, De Hans, Latin, Hansa Teutonica, was a commercial and defensive confederation of merchant guilds and market towns in northwestern and central Europe. Growing from a few North German towns in the late 1100s, the League came to dominate Baltic maritime trade for three centuries along the coasts of northern Europe. Hansa territories stretched from the Baltic to the North Sea and inland during the late Middle Ages, and diminished slowly after 1450. Hansa, later spelled as Hansa, was the old High German word for a convoy, and this word was applied to bands of merchants traveling between the Hanseatic cities, whether by land or by sea. Merchant circles established the League to protect the Guild's economic interests and diplomatic privileges in their affiliated cities and countries, as well as along the trade routes which the merchants used. The Hanseatic cities had their own legal system and operated their own armies for mutual protection and aid. Despite this, the organization was not a state, nor could it be called a confederation of city-states, only a very small number of the cities within the League enjoyed autonomy and liberties comparable to those of a free imperial city. History Exploratory trading adventures, raids, and piracy had occurred early throughout the Baltic region. The sailors of Gotland sailed up rivers as far away as Novgorod. International trade in the Baltic area before the Hanseatic League was led by Scandinavians, who established major trading hubs at Birka, Haithabu, and Schleswig by the 9th century. The later Hanseatic ports stretching from Mecklenburg to Kaliningrad were originally part of the Scandinavian-led Baltic trade. Historians generally trace the origins of the Hanseatic League to the rebuilding of the North German town of Lübeck in 1159 by the powerful Henry the Lion, Duke of Saxony and Bavaria, after he had captured the area from Adolf II, Count of Schauenberg and Holstein. More recent scholarship has de-emphasized the focus on Lübeck due to it having been designed as one of several regional trading centers. German cities achieved domination of trade in the Baltic with striking speed during the 13th century, and Lübeck became a central node in the seaborne trade that linked the areas around the North and Baltic seas. The hegemony of Lübeck peaked during the 15th century. Topic. Foundation and formation Lübeck became a base for merchants from Saxony and Westphalia trading eastward and northward. Well before the term Hansa appeared in a document in 1267, merchants in different cities began to form guilds, or Hansa, with the intention of trading with towns overseas, especially in the economically less developed Eastern Baltic. This area was a source of timber, wax, amber, resins, and furs, along with rye and wheat brought down on barges from the hinterland to port markets. The towns raised their own armies, with each guild required to provide levies when needed. The Hanseatic cities came to the aid of one another, and commercial ships often had to be used to carry soldiers and their arms. Visby functioned as the leading center in the Baltic before the Hansa. Sailing east, Visby merchants established a trading post at Novgorod called Guttegard also known as Gotenhof in 1080. Merchants from northern Germany also stayed in the early period of the Gotlander settlement. Later they established their own trading station in Novgorod, known as Peterhof, which was further upriver, in the first half of the 13th century. In 1229, German merchants at Novgorod were granted certain privileges that made their positions more secure. Hansa societies worked to remove restrictions to trade for their members. The earliest remaining documentary mention, although without a name, of a specific German commercial federation is from London in 1157. That year, the merchants of the Hansa in Cologne convinced Henry II, King of England, to free them from all tolls in London and allow them to trade at fairs throughout England. The Queen of the Hansa, Lübeck, where traders were required to transship goods between the North Sea and the Baltic, gained imperial privileges to become a free imperial city in 1226, as its potential trading partner Hamburg had in 1189. In 1241, Lübeck, which had access to the Baltic and North Sea's fishing grounds, formed an alliance a precursor to the League with Hamburg, another trading city, that controlled access to salt trade routes from Lundberg. 
The Allied cities gained control over most of the salt fish trade, especially the Scania market. Cologne joined them in the Diet of 1260. In 1266, Henry III of England granted the Lübeck and Hamburg Hansa a charter for operations in England, and the Cologne Hansa joined them in 1282 to form the most powerful Hanseatic colony in London. Much of the drive for this cooperation came from the fragmented nature of existing territorial governments, which failed to provide security for trade. Over the next 50 years the Hansa itself emerged with formal agreements for confederation and cooperation covering the west and east trade routes. The principal city and linchpin remained Lübeck, with the first general diet of the Hansa held there in 1356, the Hanseatic League acquired an official structure. Topic. Commercial expansion Lübeck's location on the Baltic provided access for trade with Scandinavia and Kievan Rus with its sea trade center Veliki Novgorod, putting it in direct competition with the Scandinavians who had previously controlled most of the Baltic trade routes. A treaty with the Visby Hansa put an end to this competition. Through this treaty, the Lubeck merchants gained access to the inland Russian port of Novgorod, where they built a trading post or contour, literally, office. Although such alliances formed throughout the Holy Roman Empire, the League never became a closely managed formal organization. Assemblies of the Hanseatic towns met irregularly in Lübeck for a Hansetag Hanseatic day, from 1356 onwards, but many towns chose not to attend nor to send representatives and decisions were not binding on individual cities. Over the period, a network of alliances grew to include a flexible roster of 70 to 170 cities. The League succeeded in establishing additional contours in Bruges, Flanders, Bergen, Norway, and London, England. These trading posts became significant enclaves. The London Contour, established in 1320, stood west of London Bridge near Upper Thames Street, the site now occupied by Cannon Street Station. It grew into a significant walled community with its own warehouses, wayhouse, church, offices and houses, reflecting the importance and scale of trading activity on the premises. The first reference to it as the Steelyard occurs in 1422. Starting with trade in coarse woolen fabrics, the Hanseatic League had the effect of bringing both commerce and industry to northern Germany. As trade increased, newer and finer woolen and linen fabrics, and even silks, were manufactured in northern Germany. The same refinement of products out of cottage industry occurred in other fields, e.g. etching, wood carving, armor production, engraving of metals, and wood turning. The century-long monopolization of sea navigation and trade by the Hanseatic League ensured that the Renaissance arrived in northern Germany long before the rest of Europe. In addition to the major contours, individual Hanseatic ports had a representative merchant and warehouse. In England, this happened in Boston, Bristol, Bishop's Lynn, now King's Lynn, which features the sole remaining Hanseatic warehouse in England, Hull, Ipswich, Norwich, Yarmouth, now Great Yarmouth, and York. The League primarily traded timber, furs, resin or tar, flax, honey, wheat, and rye from the east to Flanders and England with cloth and, increasingly, manufactured goods going in the other direction. Metal ore principally copper and, iron, and herring came southwards from Sweden. German colonists in the 12th and 13th centuries settled in numerous cities on and near the East Baltic coast, such as Elbing Elblag, Thorn Torin, Rival Tallinn, Riga, and Dorpat Tartu, which became members of the Hanseatic League, and some of which still retain many Hansa buildings and bear the style of their Hanseatic days. Most were granted Lübeck law after the League's most prominent town. The law provided that they had to appeal in all legal matters to Lübeck's city council. The Livonian Confederation incorporated modern-day Estonia and parts of Latvia and had its own Hanseatic Parliament diet. .All of its major towns became members of the Hanseatic League. The dominant language of trade was Middle Low German, a dialect with significant impact for countries involved in the trade, particularly the larger Scandinavian languages, Estonian, and Latvian. Zenith. The League had a fluid structure, but its members shared some characteristics. Most of the Hansa cities either started as independent cities or gained independence through the collective bargaining power of the League, though such independence remained limited. 
The Hanseatic Free Cities owed allegiance directly to the Holy Roman Emperor, without any intermediate family tie of obligation to the local nobility. Another similarity involved the city's strategic locations along trade routes. At the height of its power in the late 14th century, the merchants of the Hanseatic League succeeded in using their economic power and, sometimes, their military might. Trade routes required protection and the League's ships sailed well armed to influence imperial policy. The League also wielded power abroad. Between 1361 and 1370, it waged war against Denmark. Initially unsuccessful, Hanseatic towns in 1368 allied in the Confederation of Cologne, sacked Copenhagen and Helsingborg, and forced Valdemar IV, King of Denmark, and his son-in-law Harkon VI, King of Norway, to grant the League 15% of the profits from Danish trade in the subsequent peace treaty of Stralsund in 1370, thus gaining an effective trade and economic monopoly in Scandinavia. This favorable treaty marked the height of Hanseatic power. After the Danish Hanseatic War (1426–1435) and the bombardment of Copenhagen (1428), the commercial privileges were renewed in the Treaty of Vordingborg in 1435. The Hansa also waged a vigorous campaign against pirates. Between 1392 and 1440, maritime trade of the League faced danger from raids of the Vittel brothers and their descendants, privateers hired in 1392 by Albert of Mecklenburg, King of Sweden, against Margaret I, Queen of Denmark. In the Dutch Hanseatic War, 1438–41, the merchants of Amsterdam sought and eventually won free access to the Baltic and broke the Hanseatic monopoly. As an essential part of protecting their investment in the ships and their cargoes, the League trained pilots and erected lighthouses. Most foreign cities confined the Hanseatic traders to certain trading areas and to their own trading posts. They seldom interacted with the local inhabitants, except when doing business. Many locals, merchant and noble alike, envied the power of the League and tried to diminish it. For example, in London, the local merchants exerted continuing pressure for the revocation of privileges. The refusal of the Hansa to offer reciprocal arrangements to their English counterparts exacerbated the tension. King Edward IV of England reconfirmed the League's privileges in the Treaty of Utrecht 1474, despite the latent hostility, in part thanks to the significant financial contribution the League made to the Yorkist side during the Wars of the Roses. In 1597, Queen Elizabeth I of England expelled the League from London, and the Steel Yard closed the following year. Ivan III of Russia closed the Hanseatic contour at Novgorod in 1494. The very existence of the League and its privileges and monopolies created economic and social tensions that often crept over into rivalries between League members. Topic. Rise of rival powers The economic crises of the late 15th century did not spare the Hansa. Nevertheless, its eventual rivals emerged in the form of the territorial states, whether new or revived, and not just in the West. Ivan III, Grand Prince of Moscow, ended the entrepreneurial independence of Hansa's Novgorod contour in 1478 it closed completely and finally in 1494. New vehicles of credit were imported from Italy, where double entry bookkeeping was invented in 1492, and outpaced the Hansa economy, in which silver coins changed hands rather than bills of exchange. In the 15th century, tensions between the Prussian region and the Wendish cities Lübeck and its eastern neighbors increased. Lübeck was dependent on its role as center of the Hansa, being on the shore of the sea without a major river. It was on the entrance of the land route to Hamburg, but this land route could be bypassed by sea travel around Denmark and through the Kattegat. Prussia's main interest, on the other hand, was the export of bulk products like grain and timber, which were very important for England, the Low Countries, and, later on, also for Spain and Italy. In 1454, the year of the marriage of Elizabeth of Austria to the Jagiellonian king, the towns of the Prussian Confederation rose up against the dominance of the Teutonic Order and asked Casimir IV, King of Poland, for help. Gdansk, Danzig, Thorn and Elbing became part of the Kingdom of Poland, from 1466 to 1569 referred to as Royal Prussia, region of Poland, by the Second Peace of Thorn 1466. 
Poland in turn was heavily supported by the Holy Roman Empire through family connections and by military assistance under the Habsburgs. Kraków, then the capital of Poland, had a loose association with the Hansa. The lack of customs borders on the River Vistula after 1466 helped to gradually increase Polish grain exports, transported to the sea down the Vistula, from 10,000 short tons 9, t per year, in the late 15th century, to over 200,000 short tons t in the 17th century. The Hansa-dominated maritime grain trade made Poland one of the main areas of its activity, helping Danzig to become the Hansa's largest city. The member cities took responsibility for their own protection. In 1567, a Hanseatic League agreement reconfirmed previous obligations and rights of League members, such as common protection and defense against enemies. The Prussian Cartier cities of Thorn, Elbing, Konigsberg and Riga and Dorpat also signed. When pressed by the King of Poland-Lithuania, Danzig remained neutral and would not allow ships running for Poland into its territory. They had to anchor somewhere else, such as at Pautsky Puck. A major economic advantage for the Hansa was its control of the shipbuilding market, mainly in Lübeck and in Danzig. The Hansa sold ships everywhere in Europe, including Italy. They drove out the Dutch, because Holland wanted to favour Bruges as a huge staple market at the end of a trade route. When the Dutch started to become competitors of the Hansa in shipbuilding, the Hansa tried to stop the flow of shipbuilding technology from Hanseatic towns to Holland. Danzig, a trading partner of Amsterdam, attempted to forestall the decision. Dutch ships sailed to Danzig to take grain from the city directly, to the dismay of Lübeck. Hollanders also circumvented the Hanseatic towns by trading directly with North German princes in non-Hanseatic towns. Dutch freight costs were much lower than those of the Hansa, and the Hansa were excluded as middlemen. When Bruges, Antwerp and Holland all became part of the Duchy of Burgundy they actively tried to take over the monopoly of trade from the Hansa, and the Staples market from Bruges was transferred to Amsterdam. The Dutch merchants aggressively challenged the Hansa and met with much success. Hanseatic cities in Prussia, Livonia, supported the Dutch against the core cities of the Hansa in northern Germany. After several naval wars between Burgundy and the Hanseatic fleets, Amsterdam gained the position of leading port for Polish and Baltic grain from the late 15th century onwards. The Dutch regarded Amsterdam's grain trade as the mother of all trades Modernegotia. Nuremberg in Franconia developed an overland route to sell formerly Hansa-monopolized products from Frankfurt via Nuremberg and Leipzig to Poland and Russia, trading Flemish cloth and French wine in exchange for grain and furs from the east. The Hansa profited from the Nuremberg trade by allowing Nuremburgers to settle in Hanseatic towns, which the Franconians exploited by taking over trade with Sweden as well. The Nuremberger merchant Albrecht Moldenhauer was influential in developing the trade with Sweden and Norway, and his sons Wolf Moldenhauer and Birgit Moldenhauer established themselves in Bergen and Stockholm, becoming leaders of the local Hanseatic activities. End of the Hansa At the start of the 16th century, the League found itself in a weaker position than it had known for many years. The rising Swedish Empire had taken control of much of the Baltic Sea. Denmark had regained control over its own trade, the contour in Novgorod had closed, and the contour in Bruges had become effectively moribund. The individual cities making up the League had also started to put self-interest before their common Hanseatic interests. Finally, the political authority of the German princes had started to grow, constraining the independence of the merchants and Hanseatic towns. The League attempted to deal with some of these issues. It created the post of syndic in 1556 and elected Heinrich Sudermann as a permanent official with legal training, who worked to protect and extend the diplomatic agreements of the member towns. In 1557 and 1579 revised agreements spelled out the duties of towns and some progress was made. The Bruges contour moved to Antwerp and the Hansa attempted to pioneer new routes. However the League proved unable to prevent the growing mercantile competition, and so a long decline commenced. The Antwerp contour closed in 1593, followed by the London contour in 1598. The Bergen contour continued until 1754. Of all the contour, only its buildings, the Brigand, survive. 
The gigantic warship Adler von Lübeck was constructed for military use against Sweden during the Northern Seven Years' War 1563 but was never put to military use, epitomizing the vain attempts of Lübeck to uphold its long-privileged commercial position in a changing economic and political climate. By the late 17th century, the League had imploded and could no longer deal with its own internal struggles. The social and political changes that accompanied the Protestant Reformation included the rise of Dutch and English merchants and the pressure of the Ottoman Empire upon the Holy Roman Empire and its trade routes. Only nine members attended the last formal meeting in 1669 and only three Lübeck, Hamburg and Bremen remained as members until its demise in 1862, in the wake of the creation of the German Empire under Kaiser Wilhelm I. Hence, only Lübeck, Hamburg, and Bremen retain the words, Hanseatic City, in their official German titles. Topic. Modern Hanseatic connections Despite its collapse, several cities still maintained the link to the Hanseatic League. Dutch cities including Groningen, Deventer, Kampen, Zutphen and Zwolle, and a number of German cities including Bremen, Demmen, Greifswald, Hamburg, Lübeck, Lundberg, Rostock, Stade, Stralsund and Wismar still call themselves Hansa cities their car license plates are prefixed H, e -G -H -B for Hansestadt Bremen. Hamburg and Bremen continue to style themselves officially as Free Hanseatic Cities, with Lübeck named Hanseatic City. Rostock's football team is named FC Hansa Rostock in memory of the city's trading past. For Lübeck in particular, this anachronistic tie to a glorious past remained especially important in the 20th century. In 1937, the Nazi Party removed this privilege through the Greater Hamburg Act possibly because the Senate of Lübeck did not permit Adolf Hitler to speak in Lübeck during his 1932 election campaign. He held the speech in Bad Schwartau, a small village on the outskirts of Lübeck. Subsequently, he referred to Lübeck as the small city close to Bad Schwartau. After the EU enlargement to the east in May 2004 there were some experts who wrote about the resurrection of the Baltic Hansa. The legacy of the Hansa is remembered today in several names, the German airline Lufthansa i.e. Air Hansa. FC Hansa Rostock, Hans University of Applied Sciences, Groningen, Netherlands, Hans Oil Production Platform, Netherlands, the Hansa Brewery in Bergen and the Hansa Sale in Rostock. DDG Hansa was a major German shipping company from 1881 until its bankruptcy in 1980. Hansa Bank in the Baltic States, which has been rebranded into Swedbank. Hansa Park, one of the biggest theme parks in Germany. There are two museums in Europe dedicated specifically to the history of the Hanseatic League, the European Hansa Museum in Lübeck and the Hanseatic Museum and Schostuin in Bergen. Organization The members of the Hanseatic League were low German merchants, whose towns were, with the exception of Dinon, where these merchants held citizenship. Not all towns with low German merchant communities were members of the League e.g., Emden, Memel today Klaipeda, Vibor today Viborg, and Narva never joined. However, Hanseatic merchants could also come from settlements without German town law. The premise for League membership was birth to German parents, subjection to German law, and a commercial education. The League served to advance and defend the common interests of its heterogeneous members, commercial ambitions such as enhancement of trade, and political ambitions such as ensuring maximum independence from the noble territorial rulers. Decisions and actions of the Hanseatic League were the consequence of a consensus based procedure. If an issue arose, the League's members were invited to participate in a central meeting, the Tag Fährt, meeting ride, sometimes also referred to as Hansetag, since 1358. The member communities then chose envoys to represent their local consensus on the issue at the Tag Fährt. Not every community sent an envoy, delegates were often entitled to represent a set of communities. 
Consensus building on local and Tagfeit levels followed the Low Saxon tradition of Einung, where consensus was defined as absence of protest. After a discussion, the proposals which gained sufficient support were dictated aloud to the scribe and passed as binding resus if the attendees did not object. Those favoring alternative proposals unlikely to get sufficient support were obliged to remain silent during this procedure. If consensus could not be established on a certain issue, it was found instead in the appointment of a number of League members who were then empowered to work out a compromise. The Hanseatic Contour, which operated like an early stock exchange, each had their own treasury, court, and seal. Like the guilds, the Contour were led by Altamana, Elderman, or English Alderman. The Stahlhof Contour, as a special case, had a Hanseatic and an English Altaman. In 1347 the Contour of Brussels modified its statute to ensure an equal representation of the League's members. To that end, member communities from different regions were pulled into three circles Drittel, third part, the Wendish and Saxon Drittel, the Westphalian and Prussian Drittel as well as the Gothlandian, Livonian and Swedish Drittel. The merchants from their respective Drittel would then each choose two Altamana and six members of the 18 Men's Council to administer the contour for a set period of time. In 1356, during a Hanseatic meeting in preparation of the first Tagfeit, the League confirmed this statute. The League in general gradually adopted and institutionalized the division into Drittel see table. The Tagfeit or Hansetag was the only central institution of the Hanseatic League. However, with the division into Drittel, the members of the respective subdivisions frequently held a Dritteltage Drittel meeting, to work out common positions which could then be presented at a tag fair. On a more local level, League members also met, and while such regional meetings were never formalized into a Hanseatic institution, they gradually gained importance in the process of preparing and implementing tag fair decisions. Topic. Quarters From 1554, the division into Drittel was modified to reduce the circle's heterogeneity, to enhance the collaboration of the members on a local level and thus to make the League's decision-making process more efficient. The number of circles rose to four, so they were called quartier quarters. This division was however not adopted by the Contour, who, for their purposes like Altamana elections, grouped the League members in different ways e.g., the division adopted by the Stahlhof in London in 1554 grouped the League members into Dritteln, whereby Lübeck merchants represented the Wendish, Pomeranian Saxon and several Westphalian towns, Cologne merchants represented the Cleves, Mark, Berg and Dutch towns, while Danzig merchants represented the Prussian and Livonian towns. Topic. Lists of former Hansa cities The names of the quarters have been abbreviated in the following table Wendish, Wendish and Pomeranian or just Wendish quarter Saxon, Saxon, Thuringian and Brandenburg or just Saxon quarter Baltic, Prussian, Livonian and Swedish or East Baltic quarter Westphalian, Rhine-Westphalian and Netherlands including Flanders or Rhineland quarter contour. The contour were foreign trading posts of the league, not cities that were Hanseatic members, and are set apart in a separate table below. The remaining column headings are as follows. City is the name, with any variants. Territory indicates the jurisdiction to which the city was subject at the time of the league. Now indicates the modern nation-state in which the city is located. From and until record the dates at which the city joined and or left the league. <laughs> Hansa proper <laughs> Contour Topic. Ports with Hansa trading posts Berwick upon Tweed, Bristol, Boston, Dammer, Leith, Hull, Newcastle, Great Yarmouth, Kings Lynn, York topic. Other cities with a Hansa community
Topic: <laughs> Modern versions of the Hanseatic League. Topic: <laughs> City League, the Hansa. In 1980, former Hanseatic League members established a new Hansa in Zwolle. This league is open to all former Hanseatic League members and cities that share a Hanseatic heritage. In 2012 the new Hanseatic League had 187 members. This includes 12 Russian cities, most notably Novgorod, which was a major Russian trade partner of the Hansa in the Middle Ages. The new Hansa Fosters and develops business links, tourism, and cultural exchange. The headquarters of the New Hansa is in Lübeck, Germany. The current president of the Hanseatic League of New Time is Bern Sachs, mayor of Lübeck. Each year, one of the member cities of the New Hansa hosts the Hanseatic Days of New Time International Festival. In 2006, Kings Lynn became the first English member of the newly formed New Hanseatic League. It was joined by Hull in 2012 and Boston in 2016. Topic: New Hanseatic League. The so-called New Hanseatic League was established in February 2018 by finance ministers from Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Ireland, Latvia, Lithuania, the Netherlands, and Sweden through the signing of a two-page foundational document which set out the country's shared views and values in the discussion on the architecture of the EMU. Historical maps See also Baltic maritime trade c. 1400 -1800. Bay Fleet Brick Gothic Company of Merchant Adventurers of London Hanseatic Cross Hanseatic Days of New Time Hanseatic Flags Hanseatic Museum and Shostuin Hanseatic Trade Center Lufthansa Maritime Republics Thalassocracy The Patrician Hansa Records <laughs>